हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द कनेक्टर्स सो द कनेक्टर्स आर द डी माउंटेबल कनेक्शन दे आर मेकिंग द कनेक्शन विच आर डी माउंटेबल विच मीन्स दिस कनेक्शन इज नॉन परमानेंट कनेक्शन वी कैन ऑल्सो ब्रेक दिस कनेक्शन वेरी इजिली राइट सो द कनेक्टर्स आर यूज टू मेक द डी माउंटेबल कनेक्शन plus they can be used to make the connection from the source diode in the source we have leds or lasers these are connected to the fibers so for the connection of leds and laser to the fiber i can use the connectors at the receiving end also i can use the connector to connect the fiber with the photodiodes so it can be used at the transmitting end it can be used in the receiving end as well plus it can be used to connect the two optical fibers also together right so the fiber connectors are demountable they can connect the source diode receiver diode to the fiber or they can connect the multiple fibers as well plus the connectors can be deployed in the harsh military field environments as well so this makes its use very wide right so we can use it for the military purposes as well now in this video we are going to talk about the basic requirements from a good con connector what are the basic requirements that a good connector should have and after that we are going to talk about the different types of connector and the two basic connection mechanisms so we are going to talk in detail about all of them and at last we will be seeing the losses due to the connection so how in the single mode fiber we have the losses how we can mathematically parameterize it so let's start our discussion with the requirements what are the requirements from a good connector first of all it should have low coupling losses coupling losses what does it mean so if i have source diode if i have receiver diode they should couple the power to the optical fiber one optical fiber should couple the power to the another optical fiber so the power is here in the terms of light so the source leds should couple sufficient light into the fiber without any more losses so it should have low coupling losses and if we are having various connects and disconnects with the help of this connector after numerous connects and disconnects also we are not changing the coupling losses so the connector should be such a manner that it should be able to connect and disconnect the fibers multiple times and even though after multiple disconnections and connections as well it is not changing the coupling losses right so after that the next requirement from a good connector is that it should have the interchangeability what does this word mean interchangeability means if i have different manufacturers the same connector is able to connect the devices from different manufacturers as well so if i have one optical fiber from one manufacturer and another optical fiber from another manufacturer so i can connect both of them also with the help of a good connector it is not manufacturer specific after that we have the ease of assembly even a non technician person should be able to assemble it i always should not require the technical person only to assemble the connector so if somehow the connection is broken deconnection will be happened so at that time a non technician person can also go and he can also connect so this is the ease of assembly installable in the field can be done easily right and after that low cost and reliable construction right we always want the communication to be done with the help of low cost and it should be reliable as well it is not possible to change the connectors after every 4 months it is not possible so what we have to do we have to choose the connectors which are having low cost and which are having the reliable construction so they should be having precision also which is suitable to the particular application and they should not even increase the cost of the application so they should give a high precision to a particular application but they should not increase the cost of the application so without being the major cost factor they should contribute to the 
particular application in a very good manner so now after that we should have ease of connection i have already talked about it that unskilled workers can easily connect with the help of connectors the two different parts and even with the help of hands without the use of any technical machines they can connect the two different parts with the help of the connectors so i hope all of the requirements you have understood in a great manner so now coming to the connector types we have numerous types of connector like we have screw on connector in which we have various screws to connect we have the bayonet connector bayonet mount connector or then we have the push pull configuration in which we are using the push pull to connect the different parts right so now if i talk about all of them they can be divided into single channel or multiple channel assembly right so now after the this type of classification i have one more type of classification based upon the mechanism so first classification was the type of the connector right screw on bayonet mount and push pull and after that the type of assembly single channel or multi channel and after that mechanism the mechanism we are going to discuss in detail we have butt joint or expandable beam classes so what is butt jointed so in the butt jointed the two fibers are connected end to end right but in the expanded beam classes we are not connecting the fibers end to end so both of them are having their advantages and disadvantages so let's discuss about the butt joint first in the butt joint we are using the metal ceramic or molded plastic ferrule so here we will be having a structure which is called the ferrule which is made of the metal ceramic or molded plastic material so you can see here this green structure is the ferrule right so we have an alignment sleeve which is used for the alignment purposes so that the two optical fibers will be perfectly aligned so these are the alignment sleeves the black part the black part above and the below so here these are the alignment sleeve the green part is the ferrule ferrule is a structure made of plastic which is the molded plastic or ceramic or metal so we have the ferrule which is having a hole drilled into it into the hole we are placing the optical fiber so this is my first optical fiber this is my second optical fiber and we have made a connection so we have metal ceramic or molded plastic ferrule and we are using a precision sleeve into which the ferrule fit so this is a precision sleeve or alignment sleeve over which we have placed the ferrule and we have made the ferrules fit so a, a simple person who is not technician also who can go and who can align the ferrules inside the alignment sleeve right so now inside the ferrule we are drilling the hole as i have already told you so that fiber can go inside it so inside the ferrule hole is drilled so that fiber is epoxied inside it so after that we are providing the epoxy resin so as to the two fibers can be adhere to each other so now what are the challenges i hope you understood the basic structure that we have so now what are the challenges first challenge is that we have to maintain the dimension of hole diameter and its position relative to the outer surface of the ferrule so whatever position we have chosen for this surface of the ferrule to drill the hole same position must be chosen for this surface also so that the two fibers are perfectly aligned right so this is a major challenge that we have otherwise this structure is very simple now but jointed will be also having two type of mechanism we have straight sleeve and we will be having the tapered sleeve you can see this is the alignment sleeve when the alignment sleeve is straight the ferrules are cutted in the straight manner and they here are jointed in the straight manner but now in the tapered sleeve we have the alignment sleeve which is present over here you can see alignment sleeve is not straight due to which we have the tapered and to the ferrule structure and the optical fiber is going inside it so the same mechanism would be there but here we will be having the tapered sleeve 
for the ferrules right now coming to the expanded beam connector in the expanded beam connector we are not having the direct connection between the two optical fibers so this is both for our advantage as well as for disadvantage now here we were having the direct connection between the two fibers now the disadvantage is that if the connection is above or below the surface then a loss factor would be very high right so now here the losses would be less but here we will be having complex structure so you can see this is the structure for the expanded beam connector so in the expanded beam connector we are using two lenses one is called the collimating lens and second lens is called the focusing lens so the two fibers are not connected they are wide apart and in between the two fibers we have the two lenses collimating lens and the focusing lens and they are going to focus the light so the transmitting fiber is going to send the light signal so this lens is going to provide the light in the form of expanded beam to this lens and this lens is going to focus the light in, onto the receiving fiber and this is how we are having the connection possible so now here we are employing the lens on the ends of the fiber right we are not connecting the two fibers directly we are employing the lenses to couple the light from this fiber to another fiber so the transmitting fiber will be having the collimating lens which is going to collimate the light receiving fiber will be having the focusing lens which is going to fo focus the expanded beam on the core so now the fiber to the lens distance how much this fiber to the lens distance would be it would be equal to the focal length of the lens right so fiber to the lens distance will be equal to the focal length now the separation of the fiber ends can take place as beam is collimated so as the beam is collimated we will be having the two fibers which are separated in distance now here you can see the advantage it is not dependent upon the lateral alignment right as i already told you in this case the lateral alignment was a big issue we have to align the two fibers in a lateral direction plus the, we have to drill the holes also in the lateral direction in a very good manner so that the two fibers will be laterally aligned but here these are less dependent on the lateral alignment so now the second thing is that beam splitters and switches also can be inserted easily in between the space so here in between the space when we don't have the fiber their beam splitters and switches can be easily inserted so i hope you understood basically the two different types of connectors that we have so i hope you understood the basic difference between them their advantages and disadvantages as well so now coming to the single mode fiber connector so how much loss it is going to have if i have the single mode fiber connector i am using only one mode so the loss is represented by lse it is equal to minus 10 log 16 n1 square n3 square now n1 is a refractive index of the core n3 is a refractive index of the medium upon n1 plus n3 raised to power 4 4 sigma upon q exponential minus rho mu upon q so this is the loss that is incurred by the single mode fiber at the connector right when i place the connector this much loss would be there so i hope you understood the fiber connectors in detail if you have any doubt regarding any of the concept that i have discussed you can put the doubt in the comment and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible. I hope you like this session. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and also give me your feedback. Thank you so much.